him again. I failed the old devil again because the Holy Ghost said, don't you take no money for preaching. And so I followed the Holy Ghost once again. Then the devil, he wanted me to compromise the Word of God. He wanted me to follow tradition like many of the other pastors or many of the other people standing in the pulpit. He wanted me to compromise and say, well, it's okay. I failed the old devil again. I didn't listen. I obeyed the Spirit when he said, don't you compromise my Word. Stand upon the truth. So you see, I've had many failures in my life. I failed the old devil once again when he said, listen, there's a new way of life. Women with women and men with men, that's a new way. I want you to stand and proclaim it's all right. That God understands I failed the old devil again. I said, no, I'm going to follow what the Word of God says. I'm going to stand on the Word of God. So I failed the old devil again. But then the devil came and said, I don't want you to mention the blood of Jesus. Stay away from the sermons that mention the blood. I failed him again. Holy Spirit said, you stand and you proclaim the word of God. You preach the blood of Jesus and the finished work of the cross. And you see, church, this is all God's wanting all of his people to do. He's wanting us just to obey the word of God, not to, not to compromise it, not to give in to the world. Satan would want us to give in any way that we, he, any way he can get us to give in. He wants us to give in. But I've come to tell you that Jesus sent us here for one reason. He saved your soul. If you're a blood-bought, born-again child of the king today, there's something precious about being able to say that. A lot of people say, I'm a Christian, but they live like the devil. They say, I'm a Christian, but they live for the world. They say, I'm a Christian, but there's no, there's no Christian works in their lives. Because, you know, a tree shall be known by the fruit it bears. And if you're a child of God, if you're a Christian, you're going to be out there witnessing for Jesus. You're going to be witnessing for the Lord. Your, your life is going to reflect the Word of God. It's not going to compromise the Word of God. It's going to go exactly what the Word of God says, whether your flesh likes it or not. You see, your flesh doesn't want the Word of God. Your flesh today doesn't want to have anything to do with this. Your flesh today wants to come against this Word. Why? Because the flesh is of the devil. And the Word of God, the Spirit of the Lord is, is of, the, of the Lord. The, the Word of God is of the Lord. is your spiritual food. But your flesh will war against your spirit man. Your flesh wants to guide you and direct you in a way that's not pleasing unto God. And, you know, every sin you've ever committed comes from your flesh. It comes from the lust of your flesh. It comes from the desires of your flesh. Everything you can think, every lie you've told is because of your flesh. Everything you've ever stolen comes from your flesh. Every desire you've ever had, the lust, the fornication, the adultery, everything you've ever done wrong is because of the flesh. And this wars against the flesh. The Bible right here tells us that your spirit man and your fleshly man fight against each other day by day by day. Because your fleshly man wants to destroy your spiritual walk. But God's saying that, that without, without faith it's impossible to please him. And he wants us to walk by faith and not by sight. We've got to walk by faith. We've got to believe that God's going to provide for every need we have. We've got to believe that God's going to take care of all of our financial problems, all of our health problems, all of our, our family problems. We've got to trust in God. You've got to lay your problem down at the altar. You've got to take your cares and your problems to Jesus and leave them with him and walk away from them. Now, the devil will tell you to pick them up and take them back again, that you can solve it, but you've got to disobey him. You've got to fail him one more time. By not listening to him. Because the enemy will do everything he can to try to tear down the church of God. He'll do whatever he can to destroy the church of God. He's come at this church from every angle he can come at. He's tried to destroy the finances. He's tried to bring division. He's tried to shut me up. He's tried to put stuff on me, praise God, and thinking that I'll not get out here and proclaim the gospel, that I'll throw up my hands and quit. But I've got news for the devil. I'm going to fail him one more time. I'm not going to do what he tells me to do. I'm going to do what the Word of God says, and the Word of God says, by his stripes, you are healed. By the stripes of Jesus Christ, I'm all right today. 
And by the stripes of Jesus Christ, I'm going to keep going forward. And by the grace and mercy of God, I'm going to stand and I'm going to preach the truth. If it makes my wife mad, I'm going to preach the truth. If it makes my children mad, I'm going to preach the truth. And if it makes the devil mad, I'm going to preach the truth. But the truth, hallelujah, is what's going to set us all free. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I don't care who dislikes me here on this earth. But praise God, when I walk up to the King up in glory, hallelujah, I want him to say, welcome in, my son. Oh, well done. Come on into the glory. And church, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the crown of life. I may not have a lot of riches here on this earth. And I may not have a lot of wealth here on this earth. I may not have a lot of friends on this earth. But I've got something laid up over there. I've got some people over there, hallelujah, that's already crossed over Jordan. And they're waiting for me to come. And I'm soon going. I'm going to cross over Jordan. And I'm going to see my loved ones. I'm going to see my mama and my daddy and my grandma and my grandpa. I'm going to see those that have gone on before me. And church, that's worth it all. It's worth it all. What we leave behind here, what we leave behind here, that's between God and them. The people we leave here is between God and them. That's between God and them. All we can do is warn them. There's people here on this earth. There's people in this community. There's people close by that have all in their heart. You can't have Jesus in your life and have all in your heart. Do you understand what I'm saying? The Spirit of God is not going to dwell with the Spirit of the devil. And the spirit of the devil is what brings out in your heart. The spirit of the devil. You know, the Bible says, be angry, but sin not. That means you can get upset for a moment, but then you've got to forgive. People forgive. People have forgotten the word of God that says we must forgive. Because if we don't forgive here on this earth, God's not going to forgive us from heaven. We've got to forgive 490 times a day, Jesus says. 490 times if my brother sins against me. I have to forgive and walk away smiling and love love that brother with the love of Christ with the love of God in my heart we cannot hold all against them even though they may say things that will hurt us even though they may try to tear you down and destroy you you have to continually walk by faith and show love to each and every one of your brothers and sisters even though you may not agree with them you know there's people have come up to me and say I disagree with a lot of things you preach but I do agree on the blood of Jesus that's all that counts it's the blood of Jesus that counts. It's the fact that if you have repented from your heart, if you've been drawn by the Holy Spirit and placed under conviction by God, and you repent of your sins from your heart and say, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I'm sorry. Please don't let me walk down that aisle again. Please don't let me go astray again. Place my sins under the blood of Jesus Christ. For I believe that He is the Son of God. And I believe that you raised Him from the dead. And I believe one day He's coming back for me. I I believe, Lord God, that I'm going to spend eternity with him. If you truly mean that in your heart, you'll turn from the evil and wicked ways you've been headed in. You'll turn from the ways of the flesh, and you'll start following Jesus. And that's when God takes over. That's when he comes into your heart, and that's when he saves your soul, and that's when you've got victory. A lot of people don't understand that. A lot of churches don't even preach that you have to be born again. But in John chapter 3, uh, verse 17, 18, and 19, John three sixteen tells us about Jesus. 17 and 18 tells us that we were under condemnation, uh, uh, you know, from the very beginning. That we, we were already condemned because we, we believed not. But in John chapter 3, verse 3, if I can get over there, John 3, 3, it tells us that without being born again. And, you know, I cannot understand how churches can hold a service with little children in that service. And pastors, I'm not talking about the men of God because I know that you read the Word of God and that you stand on the Word of God. But I don't understand how some of these churches can bring pastors into the congregation. The number one, they don't preach the blood of Jesus. They don't preach the work of the cross. They don't preach the stripes of healing. They don't preach about the gifts of the Spirit. But what I cannot understand is how any man or person, and women ain't got no business behind the pulpit anyway. We were talking about that in here a while ago. Women, I'm telling you something. You need to read the Word of God. You need to study the Word of God. 
You really need to read it and see what God's going to do to your children. Eternal separation from God is what he says he's going to do. What does that mean? Read your Bible. Get on your knees. Pray. Seek God. And that's between you and God. But I don't understand how any man of God can stand in the pulpit in front of a congregation and not stand on what John 3.3 3 says. John 3.3, 3, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto